Right, I'm just going to go to my blog, uh, Plankytronics with two X's dot com. Plankytronics with two X's dot com. Uh, let's go down here. I've got a. Um, I'm confused between Azure Cloud Services and Azure VMs. What the? Well, I've written an article here which describes the differences, and um, but I found somebody who's really very upset. Um, back here, VM Cloud Service naming. Let me say that I've been doing IT infrastructure for a couple of decades, so this should not be new to me. I decided to take Azure for a test drive, created an Ubuntu VM and gave it a DNS name, let's call it Foo. Tried to add SSH certs in authorized keys using all the correct standard tools, and that never worked. Apparently a bunch of Microsoft nonsense that is only solvable through PowerShell APIs that amount to the fact that only a bunch of Microsoft fingerprinting stuff that happens during VM creation can take supplied cert and update the authorized keys file which on every other system is a simple file append. Okay, fine, have it your way, Microsoft. So I deleted the VM foo, intending to recreate it, supplying the keys at VM creation time. Now when I try to recreate the VM foo, I get an error. Foo already exists as a cloud service and cannot be created. Darn it if there is not now a new cloud service that I can find no way to delete. To hell with this idiocy, I'm going to find another provider that just works like every other Linux host on planet Earth and is not rife with a bunch of nonsense that is only doable through the magic console. Thanks Microsoft, after three decades you guys still don't know how to run a computer. So obviously this chap is very, very uh, upset about this, um, which is a big shame because I describe, um, I describe the difference between um, VMs and cloud services in this post. So if he had probably just read this part, he would have understood. I've got um, actual diagrams here to show the difference. The, this is a, this is showing VMs, and then I go on and I show uh, virtual machine configuration, and then I go on to show the actual virtual machines layout, and then I go on to show the cloud services themselves. But I thought what I'd do is um, just go through the process of creating a virtual machine um, and um, applying some keys to it. So uh, there's two ways you can do it. You can either use the old portal, which is this one, but um, I'm trying to trying to use more the new portal these days. So this is the new portal, kind of uh, Windows 8 type look and feel to it. You can you can configure it in that way if you want to. But it's it's quite um, sort of self-explanatory. I say new, compute, and um, the things I want to create here. I don't want to create a, a Ubuntu Server 1404. That's a specific um, one. I'm going to go in here. Um, I'm going to go to virtual machines and I'm going to click all of the Ubuntu servers so you can see all of the ones that we're currently supporting. Currently supporting uh, server 14.10. I think 12.04 is kind of thought of as being the most stable right now. Um, so it's going to ask me a few questions. Um, this fills out, it says, what do you want the host name to be? So I'll call this uh, Planky, um, Planky Blog. How about that? Because that's what we're talking about here, isn't it? I provide a username for the uh, root account. Um, now I'm going to provide an SSH public key now. So the way that I do that, because I'm running this from a Windows laptop, so I'm just going to use um, PuttyGen. So if I go PuttyGen, so PuttyGen is a tool that will generate uh, keys for me. So if I uh, click Generate, then as long as I move my mouse around in this little blank space here, it creates enough randomness. Let me try and be as random. Is this random? As random as I can, and it generates a, a key pair. Um, so this is the public key. So let's get a hold of that. Get a hold of that public key. Um, then we go back to the portal. Uh, where's it going? This one here. And I'll paste the public key into the place where it says public key. Um, then I need to provide some other information. What pricing tier am I happy with? Well, a, stand, a standard machine is fine for me. Um, then we go on to uh, networking configuration and so on. Let's wait for that to fill out. So I'm not going to do an availability set because I've only got one machine. Um, I'll have a look at the network. Um, so the virtual network is called Planky Blog. The domain name is going to be called plankyblog.cloudapp.net. So that's how I'm going to connect to that machine, plankyblog.cloudapp.net. Um, storage account is going to be Planky Blog. Um, the endpoints, well, it'll all, it'll automatically get a, um, a port 22 SSH endpoint configured anyway. So I'll just agree to all of this, agree to this, and agree to go ahead and create that. 
So it's now going to go through the process of creating it. In the interest of time, I'm going to pause the recording and then unpause it when it's created it. Actually, I guess what I could do while the um, server is still building, see it's still building here, is um, go in here and actually save the public key. Uh, sorry, save the private key. I, I should probably save the public key as well. All I've done is uh, copied and pasted that straight into the um, into the uh, VM. But really, um, I should probably save that in case I ever need it in the future. But let's just save the private key. Um, it would it would be normal to provide a passphrase to uh, protect that key as well. But uh, I'm just trying to show the really simple case here. So I called the uh, system Planky Blog, didn't I? So I try, tend to give my keys the same names as the host. So there we are, Planky Blog. It's in this um, X509 certs file. So I've now got a private key. And the host has got a public key, which is uh, currently being built on that machine. OK, I'm just going to pause the recording one more time so that we don't have to wait. Oh, no, it looks like it's finished now. So it looks like that machine is now running. So I should now be able to go um, into, into Putty uh, here. And that was called plankyblog. Dot cloudapp.net we know it's on port 22 and then I need to uh, specify authentic authentication so I need to find that key and it was plankyblog.puttyprivatekey.ppk okay so I open this um, this is just telling me that the server's uh, host key is not cached in my registry do I trust this machine I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm connecting to so then the username I created was Azure user it's, auth it's authenticating with that key. If we go back to um, PuttyGen here, you can see the name of the key is just in there. Look, after the double equals, you get the name of the key, and that's what's specified uh, just up there in the authentication message. Uh, so there you go. I'm uh, I'm logged in. So it's not too difficult, really. Now, um, just to really quickly describe the difference between a cloud service and a uh, VM, or the relationship between them. Um, I'm going to go into the old portal because you can't see this portal is a preview portal. Let me close all this stuff down. It's a preview portal. You can see that just there. And it doesn't have all the functionality yet because it's still in preview. But the old portal does have cloud services in it. So if I go to cloud services, you can see I've got a cloud service there. It's called Planky Blog. This is the name of the cloud service. If I go and have a look what's inside that cloud service and look at instances, there's my Planky Blog VM. So I can have a cloud service. Um, and it can or cannot have a VM inside it. If I then go to the VM list here, I should find Planky Blog here somewhere. There it is, Planky Blog, and that's that's a VM, and it lives inside that cloud service. Now, just to prove the point, uh, let's delete this one. So let's delete it and delete the attached disks. So I'm going to delete this machine completely. It's going through the process of deleting that now. Uh, it's going to take a little while, so let me just pause the recording while that happens. OK, so it looks like it's just deleted that machine now. Um, but let's go back and have a look at cloud services. And we will see I've still got a cloud service there called Planky Blog. And it gives me that name, plankyblog.cloudapp.net. If I use something like Putty to try and connect to it, obviously it's disconnected. Um, but let's try again. Let's go back here. It doesn't matter. I'm just using Putty because I use Windows as my client. But uh, if I go here and I try and connect to uh, Planky Blog dot cloud app dot net although the DNS name exists there is nothing sat there listening on port 22 because the machine itself has been deleted so the DNS is the DNS name is part of the cloud service the VM that lives inside that cloud service doesn't exist and so there's nothing listening so if I try and uh, connect to that even if I use the uh, the authorization key the uh, private key planky blog dot private key and I connect to this, it'll just say that it can't find the host. Any second now. However, how, I don't know how long the timer is for um, Putty. I should probably have just tested that before I created the video. Can't be any more than 30 seconds, can it? If you can't get a connection, there you go. Network error connection timed out. So all it knows is that it can't, re it can't resolve uh, well, it can resolve the name, but when it tries to connect to that name on port 22, there's nothing there listening. And we know that because there's no VM there. So, if I go back to the cloud service uh, here, 
back to that cloud service and I can delete that cloud service. So if I now delete that cloud, oh sorry, uh, let me just show you before I do that, um, let me show you, if I go to virtual machines, I'm using the new, the old portal now to create a virtual machine and I want to create a new machine, I go new virtual machine from the gallery, I'll choose an Ubuntu image, uh, 12, server 12.04, um, so let's call this uh, Planky Blog. Um, Azure user, I'm not going to do the key, I'll just use a password because it's much quicker. Um, uh, click next. Um, what it's saying here is look, plankyblog.cloudapp.net, a cloud service with the specified name already exists in one of your subscriptions. And that's true. Um, that cloud service already exists. Um, we know it does, so it's not allowing me to create that. I could change the name, Planky Blog One. I'm sure that'll work. Yeah, Planky Blog One. That works. So the reason that that name won't exist, or um, the reason that name exists, is because in cloud services, I've got this cloud service called Planky Blob. Its URL is plankyblog.cloudup.net. But remember, inside this cloud service, there are no VMs. Instances, nothing in there. So there's so although I've got a cloud service, I've got something with a name, I can't create two DNS names exactly the same. DNS just doesn't work like that. Each name on DNS has to be unique, um, or on the public DNS throughout the world, it has to be unique. So the only option I now have is I can delete this um, delete this cloud service if I delete it. So it says, yep, it's going to take a little while to delete. It takes probably about 60 seconds. Oh, less, less than that today, pretty quick. Right, OK. And that means I could now go to uh, virtual machines. I could say create a new virtual machine from the gallery. I could go to Ubuntu server. Where's it gone? There it is. Take another 12.04. Come up here. Let's call it Planky Blog. Um, yeah, I'll go with all of that. Uh, I'll go with a password again just to make it quick. And then I go here, and uh, this time plankyblog.cloudapp.net is available, and that's because I've just deleted the cloud service which was taking up that name. Okay, I'm hoping that all makes sense, and um, if you are the person that wrote that um, that comment in the blog, and uh, you look at this video, hopefully it'll make sense to you as well. Um, let's just go back and make sure I've addressed all the issues. I go back here, back to the comment so he's been doing IT infrastructure for a couple of decades so it should be new should not be new to him um, so he created an Ubuntu VM gave it a DNS name let's call it foo well I called mine planky blog I tried to add SSH certs and authorized keys using all the correct standard tools and that never worked um, I'm guessing what he means is he probably generated the the uh, public and the private keys using open SSL that's probably what he means by that uh, apparently a bunch of Microsoft nonsense that is only solvable through PowerShell a APIs. Well, I've shown you don't need PowerShell. Uh, to the fact that only a bunch of Microsoft fingerprinting stuff that happens during v VM creation can take a supplied cert and update the authorized key files, which on other, other, every other system is a simple file append. And that is exactly what happened. When I uh, typed that um, public key into the um, portal, it did append it to the authorized keys file. Uh, okay, fine. Have it your way, Microsoft. So I deleted VM foo. Well, I deleted the... Um, I deleted the VM called Planky Blog, intended to recreate it, supplying the keys at VM creation time. Now, when I try to recreate the VM foo, in my case Planky Blog, I get an error. Planky Blog, or in this case foo, but Planky Blog already exists as a cloud service. Yep, we know it. We know that's true because we've only deleted the VM. The cloud service itself still exists and cannot be created. Darn if there is not now a cloud service that I can find no way to delete. You just go into, let me show you, you go to cloud services. You pick the cloud service and then you hit the delete button. So that it should be quite straightforward. Um, to hell with this idiocy. I'm going to find another provider that just works like every other Linux host on planet Earth and is not rife with a bunch of nonsense that's only doable through the magic console. Thanks, Microsoft. After three decades, you guys still don't know how to run a computer. So I'm hoping that um, I've addressed all of those issues there. And it's actually not it's not particularly difficult. It's, um, it's reasonably straightforward. Um, let's just have a look at some of these others in case there's other questions. Step back, it makes okay sense. Relax, think of the service as the firewall. You open ports to your VMs and add load balance sets, etc. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. It's a, That's probably an oversimplified way of looking at it, but if you think about it that way, that, that would work. Um, boredom. Boredom? You didn't 
you didn't bother reading the article. Deleting a VM does not delete the cloud service. You can delete the service, although you probably didn't read that article either, or you can just put your new VM into an existing cloud service. Uh, that's true. Yeah, you can do that. Um, and then page not found. <laughs> Good name. Uh, thank, f thank you for writing this post. As an infrastructure guy coming from virtual server, I never really got the whole, why does a VM have a cloud service and why do I need one? Thanks for taking the time to write this up. Totally helped me. Great. Okay, so I'm hoping... Um, Anybody who's who's looking at this now will um, find good sense in what I've written here and be able to um, create cloud services, create VMs, and understand the difference between the two. Make sure you read the article. If you read the article, it does explain it. The only thing, the only additional thing that the video does is uh, show you how to manage um, SSH keys. Okay, have fun. <laughs>